Oh, them things hurt. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot about the Zoom. Right, we are I'm like, okay. I'm like record now, guys. We're having Zoom again? Well, for the people outside. Okay, so with that, it's 7.05, and I'll call the meeting to order. Um, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Lost in the middle of it. Okay, roll call. Uh, Mr. Hall. Uh, Mr. Hall undefeated. Okay, uh, Ms. Hamill? Present. Mr. Hogue? Present. Uh, Mr. Merlington? Have we heard anything? Okay. Uh, Mr. McGrath? Here. Mr. Nixon? Here. And Mr. Conley is here as well. And um, we have Mr. Johnson here today as our city planner. And uh, we have the minutes next on the agenda. Uh, we need to look at the minutes from last meeting and approve those or make amendments as necessary. Uh, one amendment I did send uh, Mr. Womack uh, notice that I would be gone and just wasn't put in there. So my absence should be excused for last month. So um, Mr. Womack, do we need to uh, actually have a motion to excuse him and then <coughs> yeah so i mean technically the minutes are correct mm -hmm. um, yeah. but uh, you know if you're willing to accept the evidence that you know i screwed up that's fine um probably emotions in order uh, to acknowledge that and then i guess direct the clerk to change those minutes okay if that's acceptable sure so um the uh, i'll i'll move that we uh, accept uh, Mr. Hope's absence as excused. Do I have a second for that? No second. Any discussion? All in favor of excusing his absence from the last meeting, uh, please signify with aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. Well, that passes. So you are now excused <laughs> and uh, you still eligible for the gold star, I believe, if somewhere at the end. Um, and then with that, with those changes, with that change made, is there anything else that we need to address on the last agenda? I'm sorry, the last minutes. To accept? Second. All in favor of accepting the last minutes as amended? Aye. Is that aye? aye. All opposed? Okay, motion passes. Um, moving on to... Um, Tonight's agenda, I would, I think it makes sense to perhaps do another change in tonight's agenda, just simply the order. Uh, we have old business and then new business. The old business is some long-term stuff that we might wanna spend some time on. Um, and then we have the new business, that's the site plan. If we were to move the new business to in, in place of the old business and simply swap them. So swiping item, item 10, new business with item nine, old business, uh, that would allow us to hear the public hearing, then go directly to the site plan and then um, have some time after that's done to work uh, on some of the more administrative things without forcing our representatives for the site plan to have to sit through all of that. So therefore, I move that we swap old business and new business on the agenda, doing new business first and then moving on to old business. <laughs> I'll second. Any discussion on that? Okay, all in favor of approving the agenda with, uh, as presented with those amendments, uh, say about aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, our, our agenda is approved. It is now uh, time for public comments. So if there's anyone in the audience or online that would like to speak to the Planning Commission about anything either on tonight's agenda or not on tonight's agenda, this is your opportunity to do so. 
Uh, Ms. Race, you appear to be the only person online. Do you have any public comment? I do not. And I assume no public comment from this side. So with that, uh, we'll move on from public comments. Um, to uh, this, um, <coughs> item seven, conflicts of interest in parte communication. Uh, this is the opportunity for members of the planning commission to reveal any uh, potential conflicts of interest or ex parte communication that they might have had. Seeing none, we'll move on to the scheduled public hearings. Uh, tonight, we do have one scheduled public hearing for a special land use or in tandem credit union, formerly known as Kent County Credit Union at 813819 White Creek Avenue, Cedar Springs. The applicant seeking special land use approval for a drive-through business in a highway commercial zone. And uh, they were, thus they need a special land use. So would any members of the public like to comment in this public hearing? Ms. Race, do you have any public comments regarding the scheduled public hearing? No, I don't. Thank you. Seeing no one coming to the podium here, um, we will close this public hearing and move on to the next item in the agenda. Uh, the revised agenda would put us into new business. And uh, the new business that we have in front of us today, item A is the site plan and special land, land use review for in tandem credit union. Uh, formerly Kent County Credit Union at the 13189 White Creek Avenue address. I, my understanding is that um, on the city side that this has been reviewed once by Mr. Johnson and then some additional information has come in after you left for vacation. So I'm not sure in tandem how between Mr. Womack and Mr. Johnson how you'd like to present the city side, but Was I'm open to that joke. It, Oh, wow. I think it was just uh, subliminal. Okay. It was not intended. I didn't, I didn't think it was that. Not funny. intended. I heard that over there. <laughs> and yeah, it was just, it was stuck into my brain. Sorry. I, I, I blame the applicants, but we won't hold it against them. So um, in uh, concert, how about that? It, how would you like to approach that? I know some decisions were made at different places. Well, I mean, applicants, uh, I'm sure, are eager to get up and tell us all about their project. So if you'd like to hear from them briefly and we could do that first, absolutely. Uh, feel free to approach the microphone and um, let us know what we're doing here tonight. My name is Tom Nemitz from Cornerstone Architects. This is Shannon, Shannon Trimley. Nice to meet you. We'll do this in tandem. <laughs> um, go ahead if you can. Uh, sure. So, um, in tandem, Credit Union is proposing um, this new uh, location. Um, the site currently is vacant and um, they are proposing um, to have a new building, new parking lot with a drive-through um, area. And um, we have laid out in our packet um, all the required, we went through the checklist um, with the requirements um, for drain field, um, sewer, um, we have the landscaping information on here. Um, we're proposing that there are 18 um, parking spaces, including two handicap um, parking spaces. And then um, as the parking lot comes around to the back, that's where you find the drive through area. have um, um, information on here with the site lighting, um, with the proper um, foot candles for each area around the site. Um, we wanna make sure that it is well lit um, for safety, but not overly lit to um, disturb neighbors. Um, for um, the tree line that's along the south side of the site, we um, are proposing that that stays to keep a barrier between um, this new proposed building and the uh, RV park that is to the south. Um, and as we went through the questions, um, I don't think that this would bring any additional traffic um, to the site. 
um, more than what is used to coming down the street. And um, from what we can tell, it seems to be um, within the looks and um, land usage um, of this area. It's approximately a 3,500 square foot new build, uh, single story. Um, we appreciate actually meeting with the city beforehand to kind of look through some of the fine tuning of the, the points. Uh, we did meet with the Kent County Road Commission early on to discuss um, how the best way to both enter and exit the site was and the plans that you should have in your packet indicate uh, feedback from Kent County Road Commission. We still have some more details to work out with them, but uh, at this stage, I think we're pretty comfortable with a uh, fairly complete plan. We still have some details to work on the building, but uh, this probably will be their flagship location. Uh, they have another location in Grand Rapids, but uh, that's a relatively small location in a neighborhood. Glad to see something like that coming mm -hmm. to our community. Um, do you have any questions from the Planning Commission? Um, we may call sure. for more information later, but thank you. All right, thank you. So from the city's point of view, I uh, saw so there was a couple things on there that you needed um, us to weigh on. Um, I know there was a thing about the driveway. And I'm not sure if, if we have any more information on that or where we're at regarding what they were saying with the Kent County Growth Commission. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The driveway is, I think, a matter of discussion and maybe your your discretion. And in looking at the driveway that the credit union has, it does meet our ordinance in terms of separation from the White Creek Hardware and, and, and Lumber Lumber and Hardware. Uh, they're, they're as far as ways as it can be, given the, the width of that parcel. But then there's a parcel across the street that is vacant, that is in Solon Township, that when it does come into the city, uh, will be subject to site plan review by the Planning Commission. And you have to look at where are they going to put their driveway. Our ordinance would require that it be aligned with the credit union driveway if they get there first. That's at the southernmost point of that vacant parcel across the street, which is next to a single family house. One alternative to look at is to uh, have the credit union driveway and the future driveway align. That means uh, the credit union would have to move their driveway a little further to the north. So it's at least 150 feet from the, uh, the hardware driveway. And then the, it would align with the credit union driveway because that's what you'd want. You know, who do you want, who do you want to uh, punish in this scenario? You want to punish these fine people that have come all the way from Grand Rapids and are offering you a credit union? Or uh, do you want to wait until the uh, vacant parcel across the street uh, comes in and say to them, okay, you must align with them. And that's really about all they can do. Uh, because if they move it anywhere further north, it's got to be 150 feet from the credit union driveway. Then they're only 90 feet from the a uh, hardware driveway. And that's that's a little too close. I mean, closer than your ordinance would allow. You have the flexibility to prove it, uh, but again, we're trying to make things work along that stretch of the road. So basically, if, if they get there first, then the people across the street, you would want to make them line up with the credit union driveway. Johnson, could they, um, the future property order 4186, could they align with the Southern driveway of the White Creek Lumber. And I'll tell you the reason I'm asking that question. Mm -hmm. If we force that future tenant to cross the street to line up on the Southern driveway of the credit union, uh, you're gonna have a driveway nearly abutting a single family residential use there. Mm -hmm. Right, that's a, and that's a reason to look at it, whether or not it should be there. I mean, we could obviously put some significant screening requirements and whatnot here in the future, but mm -hmm. is it possible, I know this is all future work, but uh, require them to line up up here? Yes, you could do that. Sure. Do we have anything available to us that shows us where these lot lines are? Because I didn't see that in our packet, so it made it very difficult to determine um, what the ramifications of one decision over the other would be. So, 
I'll show it in the number, but uh, so this would be the property that they're proposing putting the credit mm -hmm. union on. And you know, right now their driveway would be on the south side of that. If we were to force these people to line up with that driveway mm -hmm. in the future, now this single family home oh. here would have a driveway immediately adjacent right. to it. Right. On the other hand, what you could do is say to these people, you got to line your driveway up with this driveway. That would be on right. this edge yes. because this is a warehouse. Yep. Exactly. Um, the only problem with that is now we're going to have three driveways kind of all lined up right there. Mm -hmm. Which will make sense. But I think it's better than having mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And of course, we don't really. Did you guys catch all that? Yes. So the current driveway they're proposing is down here. So if these people develop, we'd want them to line up their driveway on that side, which is next to the single family home, mm -hmm. versus you force them to put it up there, which would then align with the White Creek Lumber driveway. So uh, planning commission, there's kind of a quick poll here. What's you know, what's your opinion? Or I'll just, I'll just put it out there. What's your opinion one way or the other? Does anyone have a, does anyone have strong opinions which in either direction? About uh, what? I sort of favor the north side. I think it should be on the north side too. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of it's like the business, same way. business, business. I've got a feeling the same way. Um, so when, I want to be clear about what we're talking about. When you yeah. say on the north side, do you mean the future parcel? Yeah, let's clarify that because that's what yeah. I mean. Because the south side of the uh, White Creek Lumber. Okay. Yes. So in this case, the credit union, where they propose their driveway on the south side of their parcel. Right. That's, that's fine. fine. Yeah. That's, that's what I'm looking at. If the other parcel was, was absolutely precluded from being able to put in a driveway um, by the shape of their parcel based upon the action of the applicant, then I might think differently. But if they have the option to go to that north, then I'm, I, I figured they got here first. That's yeah. kind of where I'm at at the moment. Okay. Well, I mean, that, get that on the record. We don't know when that property is going to develop across the street, but if, if you're all still here when that happens, then we hope your memory kicks in at that point in time. I've never forgotten anything yeah, before. For what it's worth, <laughs> uh, that parcel does have a right of way to 17 mile road on the other side of the Boys Point Bank. And for the other development thing that we're working on, which would be a strip mall, there will be a road access easement through that parking lot to the same parcel. So the road access easement, I mean, do we, is that established where that is at the moment? Would that? It will be prior to the approval of the marijuana business and the general retail business. So for instance, if there was a road access put in that northern part of that parcel, uh, it could be accessible to this parcel if planning commission were to permit it. Okay. I wanted to make sure that what we did did not in some way get in the way of a potential future. No, I think you're actually setting it up for a potential future use. Mm -hmm. But um, just from my knowledge, I suspect you're going to see a multifamily unit development on that property in the future. And I don't think we want to see 40 or 50 cars a day going through that parking lot to access 17 mile road. Right. So I don't think we'd ever allow that to be a single access. Um, it would maybe be an access, but not the only access. Got it. Okay. Uh, we, I, I'm sorry. Is there anything else um, as far as uh, the big points? I know the driveway was a large point of contention that we had to make a decision on. Are there any others that you'd like to bring to our attention that we need? Parking, uh, they corrected the parking issue, the setback comments in my report. <laughs> Landscaping, there is a discretionary item there, and that has to do with uh, whether you want to see a painted uh, landscape island, painted island, or a curved island uh, along the, the front of the building. Our ordinance requires one every 10 spaces. There's only nine spaces there. I think I'm, in my report, I had recommended that they have a curb landscape island there for a, for a tree. Uh, their position is they'd rather paint that area for to avoid any snow plowing issues. So that's a discretionary item. I think you can decide one way or the other on that. Okay. Uh, they're going to put an irrigation system in. They've corrected that. Building facade, uh, I believe they 
you have those uh, those illustrations. I believe it meets your ordinance, but typically we have, have the planning commission make the final decision on that. Lighting, uh, they have met the ordinance requirements there. Uh, waste receptacle, I had a comment given our uh, waste receptacle requirements about bollards at the rear of the enclosure. They have them in the corners, right? And, and our ordinance says they should be at the rear to prevent dumpster from getting pushed back against the rear wall. So in the corners that wouldn't achieve that, wouldn't achieve that purpose. So if you could add two more bollards that would save the wall of that dumpster enclosure. Uh, sidewalk, uh, our ordinance requires that you do have a sidewalk along White Creek Avenue. They have uh, indicated on their site plan that they wish to ask for a waiver from the city council and they would have to uh, get approval for that or install the sidewalk. And I think you just received some information from our city engineer uh, who's recommended conditional approval. So this is a special land use permit. Looking through the standards, uh, you know, it really does, in my opinion, meet the standards. The site plan is well prepared. Uh, we're fortunate to have on the first or second try, get everything just about right. So uh, you have the ability to approve this tonight if you so desire. Thank you. Mr. Nixon. I have a question for Mr. Johnson. Um, are we going to try to have them make White Creek Lumber and them connect or not? No. No. Okay, so we're not going to do any type of inter parking lot connection. Okay. No. <clears throat> I didn't see that in there, so I wanted to double check and make sure. Okay. Um, so, Planning Commission, there were a few points that you brought up there. Do you want to go through those? And we, um, so if, I, if I'm correct here, we, I think we kind of came to a conclusion on the driveway aspect of it. Mm -hmm. And then um, parking was was fine if I'm interpreted that properly. Mm -hmm. And then uh, as well as setbacks, the landscaping, the issue on there was just um, the, well, there was the landscape island issue. So- There's actually two landscape issues. There's a parking lot and a landscaping issue with the, so there's, there's two ordinances in play. There's the, must have a island every 10 spaces, but there's also <laughs> one that says you have to have one at the end of each parking row. Um, so you can interpret it whatever way you want to. It makes sense uh, what they propose, but you could require it if you wanted to. Uh, the other issue is the uh, green belt on the southern side of the property. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Now, if you've been out there, and I've taken pictures, mm -hmm. long, but it's a pretty thick uh, row of trees. Mm -hmm. You can't hardly see through it, uh, but there, there is one little section where you can see through. So we could require them to plant a tree there. Um, and also, I did not take my pretty shoes out to the back half of the property, so I don't know how much you can see from the camping ground. Um, so you may want to require some kind of screening or at least a warning of if, you know, you get complaints, then you'd be required to put screening into that point. So as long as we worded it as uh, we need to maintain screening and not remove enough and not remove any trees or or they need to create landscaping in order to fill in any gaps would that would cover it um yeah i mean must maintain screening from the property adjacent to the south i think that would provide me enough lane with that future if i get significant complaints and i put my hiking boots on i go out there and see oh yes in fact you can clearly see you know the drive through from my camping spot and then that's going to decrease okay yes we don't, we don't know if that's going to happen when Mr. Womack is here or somebody else is here. And I think it needs to be a little bit more specific in terms of the city manager or zoning administrator may has the ability to require additional landscaping uh, if the current landscaping uh, fails to provide sufficient screening. That's still pretty vague. It leaves a lot of authority in the hands of the future zoning administrator. Uh, well, it or I'm, I'm open to any interpretation that isn't vague. Just, uh, just want to make sure we had a blanket way to address it without, uh, without um, 
um, ignoring the fact that there's a ton of trees there right now. Right. So it's it's all I'll, I'll ask you the best way to work <laughs> if we go if we approve it. But well, your ordinance allows you to require uh, well, require landscaping if it dies to be replaced. Mm -hmm. I don't think the ordinance says existing landscaping has to be replaced. I guess maybe you could because you're saying that you don't need more landscaping because the existing landscaping is sufficient. So by extension, you could say if that dies, you need to put something back in. So well, the ordinance also <clears throat> says that you're going to use existing landscaping that you specifically call it out and maintain. Yeah, right, exactly. Oh, so then. Um, I'm pretty sure that this property, I'm not too sure that you can see it from Lakeside. I do know that they have a uh, yard where they store, where you can store like trailers and boats and all that. That backs up on the other side at the very far end of this. And then the camp site is way further on down. So I don't think they're going to have any problems with the uh, campsite because, like I said, their uh, overflow yard or whatever you want to call it is at the end of that tree row on the other side. Well, so I'm looking at an overhead map right now, and there's trailers that look like they're being used um, not too far off the property line. And the trees do stop at a certain point. It looks like they probably installed a number of pine trees back there to extend that tree line a, a little ways. Um, but my bigger concern is uh, applicants have indicated they want to put a pole sign on the rear of their property, which is a little weird. Um, I think they're trying to draw an attraction from the right. service ramp, the off ramp there. Mm -hmm. the um, and I'm just a little concerned that if we allow them to have a pole sign that's lit up, um, Especially at nighttime, you're going to have problems with campers staring at a giant, you know, beacon uh, not far away from you. So that's kind of my concern there. <coughs> I'm not sure if maintenance of a green belt there would cause or solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe we would have to uh, just be a little bit more specific about what they can and can't do with their whole time. So, um, I guess I'll ask the commissioners, where are we with, in your opinion, with the, let's start with the, the green belt there. Um, all right, is what there, is that sufficient? Do we need to add something to it? I think it's fine with maintaining. I, yeah, there. I think as long as it's maintained. Is that great? Mm -hmm. And then as far as the parking lot islands, do we need to require a parking lot island or are you okay with the striped area? I, I think I, as I forget up here, you have to have room for snow plowing and stuff. And I think I agree that probably need to have just a stripe for the snow plow. So it's not, because you have to get around the end of that one uh, to get back like this one right here to get back to the uh, drive-through. So if you're not able to plow around that, it could pile up. So I guess um, I have a question then. I'm, I'm trying to find the line where, <coughs> and this is for Mr. Womack or for Mr. Johnson, whoever. Um, last I knew in Michigan, we always have snow and we have parking lot islands in our ordinances. So where's the line, um, in your opinion, where they become more of a nuisance is, or or they required? It depends on whether, well, so first of all, if you keep driving your SUVs, you're not so sure about that snow thing, but- Yeah, that's true. Um, it depends on who you ask. If you ask my DPW workers, they don't want any kind of curves anywhere. You know, pushing snow is very easy when there's no curves. Hmm. Uh, but on the other hand, your job isn't necessarily to look out for their ability to push snow. Uh, you want their site to look nice. Um, and lots of asphalt without greenery to break it up can look bad. Um, I think the, the one that we're talking about, which is on the kind of north part of the you know, mm -hmm. parking lot, which is a wave. <coughs> you know, they've, they've got a significant amount of, of greenery and 
shrubs and plants on the front of the property. Um, I think we'd probably let them get away with not curbing up this part. Um, I'm sure they'd appreciate it too. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's where I'm at as far as I, I, I personally would like to see a, if we don't have this, then what else do we have? And this property obviously has lots of opportunity for green space. Um, but maybe at another property in the future, we might say, we need some green space in here. So that's, uh, that was kind of what I was looking for. How about the planning commission? Do you have any opinions one way or the other? Yeah, I think it's fine to use their thing just because the parking lot isn't all that big. Like, I feel like that rule is more geared towards like if you have a target parking lot or something like that, where it's like huge and then there's no fog bank room anyways. And it wouldn't just be like a vast space with a shop. Okay. Great. Let's see. So then uh, the facade, did you all get a chance to see the building materials mm -hmm. in the facade mm -hmm. issues or, or concerns with that? I thought it looked really nice. I concur. There's no other discussion on that. Uh, the lighting, is this just a minor issue with pole height on this? On, or has that been handled already? There was a was under handled. under six B. Was that handled already? Yeah. Okay. And then the waste receptacles. Um, I believe uh, is, is it a, is there's any issue on your end with adding the waste bollards as he described? Okay. And then the sidewalk, as I understand, we don't have that they can apply for the waiver to the city council. It's the city council that makes the yeah, that's a condition of approval. Condition. Yeah, we also generally tell them you gotta at least show us the sidewalk on the site plan, you know, conditional upon waiver of city council. Uh, you can't, you know, I'll tell them this now because I'll tell them it again in a, a later email. The council only approves the waivers if the applicant acknowledges that it's not an you know unconditional waiver; it's a waiver for now, but would be putting it in motion. <laughs> so um, the council does have uh, plans to require sidewalks all throughout that entire district. So it, it, it will be a requirement in the future. So if applicant wants to, they can submit something on the letterhead saying, please, you know, uh, let us waive the sidewalk now. We acknowledge that we'll put it in the future. Or they can email, email me, I will tell them. So this, oh, sorry. No, you, you have it. The sidewalk in the, Photos is not going to be there, or the one sidewalk going all the way out to White Creek is that? Like, what are we waiting? Is that right? Or allowing them to ask for a waiver for? Let's say you're like your White Creek, where they would be. Yeah, so like all this around the building would be sidewalked. Right. Right, and it's but, just going uh, out to White Creek. Right. Is the way then? Okay. Because like the lumber store doesn't, you know, doesn't they don't connect. have one. Right, and so mm -hmm. eventually they won't sidewalks all the way down. Okay. I guess the reason I ask is because I'm starting to feel like personally, like we need to start putting new sidewalks in. We've been deferring them forever. Um, but I don't know if this is uh, simply a situation where the where they can just go to the city council to get a waiver, whether it's worth us us putting any effort into it. That's what I, that's what I Well, I think that would be my advice. Show it on a site plan. And then with a note saying, you know, subject to waiver of city council. Well then there's just one step ahead of me. Okay. <laughs> so if it's on the site plan, then all right. There you go. Um okay. Did I it, have I missed anything? Is there anything else we need to discuss on this? Yeah. Now we don't have um, I'm sorry. Uh, he was talking about that rear sign. Do we oh. need to discuss that? So, um, planning commission doesn't normally get into the signage aspect mm -hmm. of this. Uh, that's something almost entirely always done by the zoning administrator. Mm -hmm. I just I, I call it out because it was a kind of an interesting thing. I never thought that somebody would try to use a, a pole sign as a billboard. I, frankly, I don't think it's going to be that effective. That's currently what Ms. Cameron wants. So 
uh, they will get whatever they are legally able to get. And you know, I can deny it and they can go to the CBA if they don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. So the planning so, commission doesn't really have to wait. So we don't have to wait. Okay. Right. Okay. Cool. Good enough, because I'll double check. I, I'd like to avoid touching those sign issues if yes. I possibly can. Yes. Um, okay. I don't have the advantage of a well-worded um, motion to, to work off of here, unless you've given me one that I, I, I don't know about. I think it, I did not give you one. Uh, I think it would be a good exercise for you to practice. Oh, of course. <laughs> Doing one yourself. Well, you know, this would be also a great opportunity for me as chair to say it's really not proper for me to be offering the motion. Well, <clears throat> one of the planning commission members should offer the motion. I move that Conley should make the motion. I'm not sure if that works that way. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a motion on the Bollards. Uh, okay. And then most striping. Yep. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything. So I think the important thing is going to be that you should be approving of the revised site plan dated 72921. Uh, and then let's see, what other things we discussed? Uh, driveway to the south is fine. Maintain the screening that's already there. No parking uh, islands needed. And then check with uh, city council for the waiver. Oh, make the motion. Do what? Do we actually have to make a motion to say that the driveway is fine if it's we're just accepting it as it's on the site plan? Yeah, you don't have to say that. We didn't accept so. the site plan and it's there, so you approved yeah. it by approving the site plan. So, so what? What do we have here that varies from what's on their site plan? That that you would accept the parking island as painted. Mm -hmm. You shall maintain the uh, green, belt. green belt. The bollard issue is on the site plan, the new one. Uh, one of the conditions would be to add two more bollards at the rear of the uh, waste receptacle enclosure. Okay. Add that to the site plan. And then on the on the green belt, mm -hmm. you want to say maintain the southern green belt. Uh, and that the zoning administrator is authorized to require additional landscaping, should existing landscaping need or whatever, whatever happens to plants. Maintain or replace. Isn't the yeah. zoning administrator able to do that? Yes. We're, we're, we're spilling a lot of ink for the fact that I can do that anyways. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's what I was curious. How much way to go? So we want them to maintain a continuous green belt. Yes. <laughs> And then the the lighting issue that you said has been fixed is already fixed on their new plans. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we don't have to explicitly accept the facade if we accept their site plans. The you would say you're approving the site plan dated 729 and the I'm not sure what the date is on the facade. I think that may be different, but you can uh, The side plans as presented, I think, would be acceptable. So I'll move that we accept the 729 site plan with the additions of striping uh, and putting two additional ballards in the back. And main. Is this an actual motion, right? This is my motion. Okay. So would, at this point, we need a second or not. I'll second it. Okay. Yeah. So we've, we've answered the green space issue, right? Mike, you can enforce that this rule, Mike? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. not hard to add to your motion to maintain the green belt on the south side of the property. Okay. So we'll modify. I'm, I so we'll, we'll modify. So you modify? I will modify my motion to include maintaining the green space. Green, green belt. Green belt. And I'll second again. Okay. <laughs> Correct. Very good catch. You would want to add that uh, 
the uh, project meets the special land use standards of section 40-571. Is that also your motion? Yes, I'd be happy to do that. We might as well do both at the same time. Is that your second? I'll second as well. Yes. See how well you're doing? I'm, 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 <laughs> I'm, 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 I am I was you, happy Mr. to make two I'm happy to see this progress. How about that? Sure. We're totally killing it on our own with no help whatsoever. Okay. Um, so what, I can modify this all night. Following, following Robert's rules, at least in some way. Um, any discussion on the motion that's on the table at the moment? And I'm going to use that as an opportunity to make sure we haven't missed anything. Oh, uh, did we need to approve the uh, sod as it stands? Because he said something about. He said, he said that we should take it as presented mm -hmm. um, within the site plan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Within the site plan, right? So is that right? Because I thought you said approve the site plan, but then also something about the facade. The facade plans as presented. It's the part of the application. So it's good to get it on the record that you're also approving the facade. Okay. So so would anyone like to, would would you like to amend your motion? I think my motion covers that. Okay. So then we'll leave the site plan. In. Okay. Then um Are we, okay, I guess we'll take a vote then. Mm -hmm. All in favor of his motion, please signify with aye. Aye. All opposed? Yeah, motion carries. <laughs> Normally we have the motions written out. But vacation's gotten away from doing that. Thank you. And they, yeah, thank, you. thank you for your patience while we, uh, accelerate the process of getting you approved by showing you the sausage getting made. So sorry about that. Thank you. So now you have to present the final site plan with the modifications if any made back to me. The paper copy is one electronic copy. And then I'll give you final approval. Thank you. Okay, so let me find my agenda again here. The next thing on our agenda would be we'd be going back to old business since we flipped them around. Um, so what was item nine, which would now be item 10, old business. Um, the first, uh, the first um, subject that we need to go over tonight is item A, the White Pine Trail Overlay Zone. And uh, maybe we can finally move this thing forward. Mm -hmm. So where should we start with that? We have um, a memo from May 11th that uh, goes back to some stuff we talked about, I believe, in March and the year before that. So, the year before that. So, my question with this one is this has to be within an existing structure, or can new structures be built? My understanding is that it could be built. Okay, I thought so, but I wanted to clarify. Like I was reading through it and I was, buildings. I thought that's what it said, but then as I read another spot, I was 100% sure. So that's why I was. It loves right. both. Yeah. Yeah. This is page 15, by the way, if you're following along in your packet. So. so, a brief history before Mr. Johnson gets started here. So, the previous planner um, helped modify the zoning districts and change some of these industrial properties to mixed use properties. Um, and that kind of led into some problems of you've got a giant industrial building mm -hmm. um, and nobody wants to put a, a boutique flower store there. So we then, as a planning commission, reverted those properties from mixed use back to industrial, which is what the use of the building was previously. But I think there's a recognition that there might be uh, some uses that would be willing to take on some of these old buildings or empty lots and use it for commercial purposes, not industrial purposes. So we're not forcing it upon them, but we are giving them the option to use it for commercial purposes instead of industrial purposes. That's kind of what this overlay district does. So I think we're in a position at this point to review the proposed uses proposed for the district. And if you guys are in agreement, I think the <coughs> final. I don't know if we're in a position to make a recommendation <coughs> or not. 
we could bring it back in a final uh, form after review today, because of course this is now a two year deal. Um, but I think it's in a pretty good place right now. And I'll let Mr. Johnson walk us all through it. Okay. I'll try to give you the short version of this, but uh, this began some time ago. And what we're trying to do is, is as, it's, as it says in the purpose section, to uh, basically capture folks that use the White Pine Trail. And you're all familiar with Rockford and how people dump off the trail and then they jump into the bar and get an ice cream cone, et cetera. We want, we want our businesses to have that same opportunity. And this is just, uh, <clears throat> this is a permissive type of regulation that come in and take advantage of it. There are, there are very flexible rules. They're not onerous. Uh, they allow signage. They allow someone to uh, have a restaurant place in the White Pine Trail, serve uh, coffee, cafe, uh, and other things that are, that are listed here in the ordinance. And I'd like your comments on those as well. Uh, and it applies just to the industrial zone properties uh, on the map that is in your, in your packet. And then not to complicate things, but the way to put this in effect is we adopt the text, and then we have to create an overlay zone on these cross-hatched properties because it is a basically kind of a new zoning district. And an overlay zone just says uh, those properties, you can do exactly what it's zoned for industrial. And as an added bonus, because you're in this geographic overlay zone, you get to do all these other fine commercial things that the city is letting you do. So they have a special advantage over somebody that is not within that zone. So there's a certain special set of regulations that overlays what's there and they get to take advantage of it if they want to. So it does apply to existing buildings. Uh, if, it's an, if they're expanding within an existing building, it's zoning administrator approval. If it's a, uh, a new building, then they have to come in for site plan approval, just like they would any place else in town. And then uh, a previous planning commission, uh, I think Mr. Nixon and Mr. Conley were part of that. Uh, they scanned the, uh, went through the commercial uses in our, in our B2 zone and basically uh, cherry picked the ones that they thought would work best along this, uh, along the White Pine Trail. And that's, and that's what made it into the ordinance you have in front of you. So you've had a chance to look at that, I hope. We excluded tattoo parlors. Uh, there are some special use permits, but if you're comfortable with the uses that are listed there, uh, then that's good. If you wanna to add to it or subtract from it, you can do that too. I did have a quick question. Yes. Uh, page 22, um, there is a highlighted section that got my attention when I was looking at it. And 50% of the portion of the building. Oh, that's and it access. talks about corrugated metal. That's for the next one. It's for the it's building. For the industrial yeah. building. Yeah. That's the facade uh, ordinance. It's for the what? Minutes. It's for the next thing on the agenda. They're just right next to each other. Wait a second. <laughs> yeah. It got me too yeah. when I was reviewing this. When we this get to page 22, today. we're on the next item B where we're talking about the industrial building. Yeah, we're going oh, to okay. So, so never mind. I think we probably answered your question. Yeah, no. I was I was kind of concerned because I was thinking corrugated. I don't remember right. putting corrugated metal on the white pine trail. Yeah. So I was really concerned. Yeah. And you're right. The way this the agenda is, the way the pack is put together, it just flows right into that. So I can see the confusion. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or, or comments? Since we've been talking about marijuana businesses, where would they fall in the overlay? No. They're not allowed in the industrial zone. They're only allowed in the B2. Are they, yeah, they're allowed in the industrial zone. Which business? Uh, uh, marijuana. marijuana business. So uh, some very smart and debonair person wrote the marijuana ordinance in such a way that it would prohibit most marijuana businesses from the downtown industrial sector. I, I don't think it's possible, just based on the setback requirements on marijuana businesses to use that downtown industrial section for marijuana. Yeah, and that would be, I mean, that, that's a current rule today, regardless of the overlay zone. But good question, though. Any other questions for Mr. Johnson? Because I've kept him standing there already once tonight when I didn't mean to. I'm pretty, I can take care of myself. I could okay. stand here a long time. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, so um, uses, I, I mean, 
I'm fine with what's on there. Yeah. Uh, we it isn't yeah. the first time we've looked at it, but uh, but we do have some fresh eyes. So that's true. <laughs> Maybe. Any, anything you thought for you all? I thought it, I read through the whole thing earlier today and I thought this was fantastic. I mean, yeah. this is what needs to happen out there. There's a lot of people that go to Cedar Springs Brewing that ride that trail. Yeah. That's all I really seem to be going through is, as far as a business downtown. Right. If this can open up more businesses to those people riding, walking, running, it makes a ton of sense for our downtown development. And I walk that every single day with the dogs. And it's, it's just a line after line of, of our, our, our not best face uh, presented to the people walking down the trail. So mm -hmm. anything that would soften that up, mm -hmm. in addition, giving people more reasons to be on that trail, mm -hmm. I, I think is win win. Yep. If you ask me. You gotta figure out how to get a river and a dam there. So be a, a <laughs> oh, I've got some plans. Uh, involves lots of explosives <laughs> <laughs> and a back out, right? Yeah. <laughs> So um, any reason why we can't push this through tonight then and move on to the next step? I don't think so. The one thing um, I was looking, is there a, an issue with the size of buildings? Like, is there a minimum size? I mean, minimum size? Yeah, the reason I asked, I was in Muskegon on, what's today? It's Tuesday, yesterday. So anyways, they have an interesting business district downtown where they're allowing pop-up shops for people to kind of, Oh, yeah. experiment and they have a small it's almost like a shed right uh, if you've been down there and i thought this would be an excellent spot maybe for somebody to do a pop-up shop at mm -hmm. certain times of year and i didn't know if there was a minimum size for a building that could be put in this district i don't think there is um and we have talked about doing something similar to that here yep. um i guess the answer is i'd have to do a deep dive into the ordinances and figure out exactly what would be required um so we, we've actually been talking about that on main street in one particular location mm -hmm. But I'm not opposed to it. Somebody wants to present a. I just want to make sure we didn't restrict somebody, you know, our future use to like, all right, the building's got to be a certain square footage before it can be there, right? The clear problem with that plan is going to be access to bathrooms, access to electricity. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. Yeah, because I, I was just curious. But, but you did bring up a good point that I'm not sure the ordinance covers that. And that is if, if someone wanted to put up a pop up shop or just set up one of those canopies that you see at tailgates a and, truck yeah and somebody goes out there and tries to sell water you know to passerbys <laughs> you know that uh it doesn't really set up for that it doesn't say you can't it doesn't say you can mm -hmm. and maybe that's something you want to add here we do have other sections of the ordinance that prohibit what's essentially temporary businesses uh, because from a municipal point of view you don't want temporary businesses mm -hmm. they don't pay property taxes they generally don't follow the health and safety rules. Um, and I, frankly, I just don't think they're a good investment in the community. Now, you know, the, the Girl Scouts selling cookies, the Boy Scouts selling beef jerky, whatever, that's normally fine, as long as it's not systemic and ongoing and, you know, permanent. Um, but as far as somebody setting up a, a truck business in a parking lot somewhere, that's not something we want to get involved in. Yeah. No, I was thinking more of the pop-up shops I saw in Muskegon where they're trying to now that help young entrepreneurs or just entrepreneurs get a jump start. Yeah. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, Sparta has something similar as well. Mm -hmm. So but that would be more of a permanent installation. Yes. So I'm sure we'd find some way to let it happen if somebody okay. wanted to. Yeah. And I believe I have talked to him about the food trucks and stuff, and there is an ordinance or something. We do have a food truck ordinance. Right. And so there is an ordinance already in play for the food trucks if they wanted to do something like that. Yeah. And similar, we don't want food trucks parked out in front of a restaurant. So right. But we're talking about, you know, over there by the White Pine Trail. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think they're specifically permitted in the staging area. Mm -hmm. But nobody has taken us up on that. We did have one food truck try to move in. We told them you got to get a permit. I think it cost Five bucks, and they said no. Screw you! <laughs> and they left town. So, wow. yeah, I don't know, but I, I think it's a good ordinance. Um, <laughs> if you want, I think the proper motion would be the motion to recommend this to the council. Mm -hmm. Adopt it as an ordinance. And just think you bounce on something else too much. <laughs> well, I I don't want you to get in. You know, we don't want the state law to get in the way of stopping this. But you you need a public hearing on this. 
and notif notify people within uh, yeah. 300 feet. There's all that state law stuff. The law of all of laws. State I hate, law. okay. I hate to have you get in trouble. Oh, that's, so, I think that's why we pay you, actually, is to let us remind us those things. And amongst other <laughs> wonderful <laughs> things. Okay. Yes. So mo motion to set a public hearing at the next regular meeting and then make a recommendation at that point. Yeah, this and this because you're you're actually changing the zoning on these industrial, you'll have to notify people within 300 feet of the overlay zone parcels and uh, get a list of the parcels that are within that zone within the overlay zone. So you so yeah, so you know which parcels it belongs to rather than my crew drawing, you know. So well, she's very good friends with Jason Moore now. She's our regional So if you can if you can put an ad in the paper and notify people within 300 feet and the people that are being subject to this and get that done in time, then you can have a public hearing at your next meeting. Yeah, we'll treat it just like a planned rezoning. Right. Is that reasonable time frame to do at the next meeting? Okay. I think we can. Anyone How about a, set a, a motion to set a public hearing and then we'll determine what's the best time. Okay. I'll set a motion to have a public hearing to Oversee the uh, White Pine Trail overlay zone amendment. Seconded. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Unanimous. It passes. We're going to have a public hearing. Woohoo. <laughs> bring, your, bring your Sunday best. <laughs> so, <laughs> will that be in tandem with me and Oh, we're never going to live that one down. I, I hope not. I need to give you something to give her. So um, moving on to um, item B, uh, sample industrial building facade requirements ordinance. So. Okay, go ahead, Mr. Nixon. I'm for the panel. <laughs> oh, do we want to let them uh, describe to us what where we're at on that? Yes, and then of we'll... course. Yes. <laughs> so uh, I, I didn't, I kind of just cut and paste on this. It's not really obviously very finalized form. Uh, what you see there, at least at the beginning, is Mrs. Johnson's original proposal, which starts with the facade. Um, and I only highlighted in their corrugated metal um, because I think part of the original discussion was, well, you know, we don't want these industrial buildings just to be whole barn, just corrugated metal. Mm -hmm. um, so I highlighted that, and then I went on a deep dive into other people's you know, industrial facade ordinances. Very interesting stuff out there. So I added a whole bunch of bullet points after that with some language uh, that I think would probably work. Um, but I kind of need to hear from you guys what you do and don't like. So, um, you know, you see following exterior siding materials, uh, that's probably in addition to what Mr. Johnson provided. Uh, for any facade facing the public street, Siding material shall not cover more than 40%. So if you look at the new <laughs> Jade Farm building that was put up in about a day and a half, you guys approved of it. It is, I think, all corrugated metal on the outside. But you see that they do at least have different colors. You know, uh, it, it breaks it up a lot. So I don't know if we want to require uh, that they have all different materials. Don't have good language for you right now to say, you know, 40% can be one color and 40% has to be a different color. But I at least wanted to give you the, uh, the idea that you can require something like that. Um, the first three feet has to be brick. You know, everything above that can be corrugated metal, which I think I addressed further on. Oh, go to the next one. So, building materials susceptible to damage by vehicles, uh, including metal siding, corrugated metal. Are prohibited in the lower three feet above grade adjacent to paved and or lawn areas. So that's kind of our way of saying you got to put basically a knee wall in and then above that can be something else. So I, of all the things here, I think that's probably the best one to add. Uh, some additional language for exterior cladding there. Uh, entrances, uh, I like that. Uh, building entrances shall be clearly defined and recessed or framed mm. by sheltering elements such as awning, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's appropriate to kind of funnel people towards the front door mm -hmm. um, and providing something like that as opposed to a slab-sided building. 
minimal cost for the developer, and I think it goes a long way for architecture. Uh, so the building elevations, I'm not so sure on, especially if we're going to require the three foot minimum uh, language. Uh, this was something I, I found somewhere else where it basically says you have a base, a body, and a cap, and they all kind of have to be their own individual architectural styles. But again, it was interesting. I thought you guys might benefit from maybe seeing it. And then, so I added the materials section after that, which was the same language that went with, you know, uh, body, base, and cap from that ordinance. It gives you a lot of language about what exterior facade uh, stuff you would allow. I added the uh, fenestration language because I, I love that word. It's one of my favorite words. Uh, fenestration is windows. So I don't know how much we want to require windows, but it's certainly something we can do. Uh, color, again, there's lots of language about the color. And then roofs. So roofs should be designed to reduce the overall mass of the structure and harmonize the surrounding development. Parapet walls, roof systems shall be designed to conceal roof-mounted mechanical equipment. I think that's important. Um, I caught the Jade Farms installing an HVAC system out in the backyard, which runs along a public road. Uh, I dinged them on that. They have to screen it. Um, but we can require uh, HVAC type systems to put on the roof, and we can also require that if it's on the roof, that they have to be screened. Just some additional language for you guys to consider. Can I go back and ask a question about the, the building mass regarding the I want to make sure I understand the way they're using that term. Um, are they are they talking? Are, are they using this in a visual way, thing that to make it not look too massive, or are they actually referring to? I'm, I'm not sure how a roof reduces an actual building's mass. So there there were some actually great uh, visuals I probably should have added to your. Uh, maybe I'll do that via email after this meeting, so you have a better idea of what I'm talking about. But. Mm -hmm. I don't have a good blank piece of paper. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that from where you're sitting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but it's basically where you require them to make the building go in and out and jut around. So it looks almost like a, a main street with different sided buildings and shapes and whatever else. <laughs> um, mm. So it's not just slab sided. It's not a huge monolithic structure. Um, instead, you're requiring them to have these kind of cutouts and, and swirls and curves um, to reduce the kind of visual, you know, size of the building. Got it. Um, and like I said, I'll, I'll try to find that information and send it to you after. An example might be like the front of many of the Meyer we've seen. Yeah, that's what I was saying. The Cascade Meyer came to my put mind. Those layers at different depths. Oh, or, yeah, I so see. It's a giant building, yeah. but they make it look like smaller ones. Now, the problem with that is that's very expensive. I was just going to ask you how much that was. And so it, it can look very good. Um, and there's no play way to say it, so I'll just say it. I don't know if Cedar is in a position to tell these businesses we have to spend this kind of money to be here, especially when I think we get businesses like Jade Farms putting up cheap buildings that look nice. I think you can make a cheap building look nice mm -hmm. with some of the other rules that we have. Yeah, about the town. Black and white metal building we approved. Corner of 16 and White Creek, mm -hmm. the building that just got put up in three yep. days. Maybe Looks sharp. Meeting. I'm not sure, but we didn't approve that. Me and you, we're going to do a field trip. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a, I just a city bus. There, we're going on a tour. I missed no. it. Okay. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. Oh but I, know we I haven't it. seen it yet either. But I yeah. didn't it looks good. It. I drove by it after I got put up. I think it looks really sharp. That's cool. Yeah. So is that corrugated metal then? Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so, just a darker one, right? Like it was like the gray. Yeah, so one of the tricks that they use, which is language in here, is the base, which is still corrugated metal, is a black color. Okay. And then above that, it's a, a grayish color of some kind. Okay. So it looks like it's two different materials, but it's really just different colors. Uh, but I think maybe we'd want to, and I don't know how we'll do this, say the first three feet, first four feet of the base of the building have to be something different. 
I don't know if we want to allow them to have uh, corrugated metal all the way to the ground. But if, yeah. Or if we want to say, you got to have brick or block for the first three feet, yes. uh, which is, I think, what we did at the new fire station. Mm -hmm. But what if somebody wants to do all brick? That's uh, so other language in here, and again, I haven't written the ordinance, we're just talking about this stuff. Other language in there said something about, well, the building has to be 40% of this or 40% of that. We could. And Can it be specified to be like, if it's corrugated metal, it needs to be these things. And then if it's a nicer grade, like if you're gonna do, well, I don't know, like- It's to me, the color breakup makes sense. Break, oh, that's what right. I think, so. yeah. We're, not, we're kind of doing a balancing act here. Uh, the cheap buildings are corrugated metal. And the way we make a cheap building look nice is by requiring a little bit of this different colors, you know, projecting awnings, little things, right? It's unlikely that you're going to have somebody decide to put up a large brick industrial. industrial. Okay, so that's just, just because of the cost. Okay, all right. That's but right. on the other hand, what we could do is we could say, okay, corrugated metal is acceptable for 40% of the building. Although I think I put in my notes in something like, like 75, 75 or 80%. 25. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, and again, I don't remember the math, but if you have a 20 foot tall building and we already require four foot of it to be some other material, that's Basically. something like 25% okay. of the building. So you, you would naturally say, you know, 75% can be corrugated metal, but no more than that. So if they want to have a 25 foot building, now they got to figure something else out. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but it's like the top of the four yeah, door like like that. Town already. Okay. So, sorry. Go ahead, Mr. We are just talking about the part that faces the street, right? So uh, you could require it all sides, but it makes sense to be the sides mm -hmm. that face the street. Well, that's okay. that's the part that's visible. Yeah. And yeah. the rest of it is going to be corrugated metal because that's a cheap, sustainable building style, you know? Not cheap. I mean, it's, it's durable, okay? And you can make it look nice. But I think if you want your industrial park or buildings to look nice, typically most communities just have the part that faces the street. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so now here's a, here's a problem. So uh, when you are driving along the road, uh, you might be facing a side of the building visually that doesn't face the street. Of course. You're facing the part that is 90 degrees from the street, right? So you're seeing that side of the building, even though it technically doesn't face the street. So that would be three sides of the building because you can see it if you're coming from the other yeah. side. Then you're talking about really raising the cost to industry. You want to have a nice look at building, but you also want to have, well, and so this don't is raise where, the cost so much that they don't want to come. So this is where we get into the 75% be corrugated metal. If you change the color, there are ways where I think we can manipulate it. Um, like on the other three sides, it can be the same metal, but you want it to be a different color. Is that what you're saying? So it'd be like the color. same cost, but just different. Or, for example, the uh, the part about the base being three or four foot tall, and it has to be a brick or a block or something like that. That is significantly more expensive than corrugated metal. Now we could require that only parts that face a street have that base. Although I suspect, just based on how buildings are built. You probably want to do that on all four sides. Um, but, you know, again, this is coming down to what does this community want the buildings in it to look like? And frankly, if you have somebody who's so cheap that they don't even want to put the basics in, mm -hmm. you might not want them here. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have ever gone up and down the White Pine Trail uh, over by where the uh, display pack building is, formerly Wolverine Road Launch, uh, that is a humongous slab sided structure along the White Pine Trail. It looks horrible mm -hmm. and it's seen from a public place. Yeah. So, would we have been better off in uh, the 70s when Clint was still here, um, requiring them to install something that breaks it up visually? Actually, you guys didn't move here until 99. I didn't move here until 2004, but it's okay. I was alive in the 70s, if that counts. So, I have a question. Corrugated metal, is that different? Because what I'm seeing every time you say corrugated metal is I'm seeing 
moonshine stills with sheet tin just from top to bottom. So are we talking sheet tin or is there something totally different? So this is, um, we could also require a minimum gauge. Okay. So sheet tin is, I don't know, 40 gauge. Something like that. Um, I think the new fire station is something like 16 gauge or 18 gauge. So the lower the number, the thicker it is. Mm -hmm. uh, we could require a minimum gauge. Okay. That would make me, I think that would be a lot better. Because I'm just thinking about just going to Menards, grabbing the cheapest sheet tin you can find, and sticking it on a building, and that's going to look horrible. Yeah, I, I suspect that most most developers are going to have a minimum gauge in mind, anyways. Um, but you're right; you don't write these ordinances for the good developer. <laughs> no. <laughs> so the gauge is just like how loop de looped it is. No, the gauge no, is the thickness of the bottom. Oh, okay. Like forty. You know, games, I'm like fine with some of like a full facing corrugated front as long as it's broken up. You know, I I I've seen some that I think really really good with you know two or three different you know either design something to make it look different. Mm -hmm. I understand if they're trying to you know cost savings, but I mean our goal here is to make our city look welcoming and nice, right? Right. And not we don't want a trashy industrial park. And honestly, for what it's worth, if you want to stop by the Jade Farms. Get out of your car, walk around the building up close, and yeah. take a look. Okay. They're friendly guys, and you know, just tell them who you are. They'll be happy to show you around. Because uh, it's a nice looking building. Yeah. The, the Jade Farms that we just approved is would be kind of at the minimum level of what we would require from yes. somebody. Right. So that I just think they did an excellent job. That's already a huge step. at the minimum level of making it look nice. Yeah. Okay. But you're right. I would want to probably at the very minimum take what they did and say that's the minimum. You I, I would, and then I, I'll, I'll sign up, uh, or I will define what I'm looking for. It's, we need at least one side of the building, the front facing side of the building to be prettied up. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna use the gussy word because I got smacked on that before. And by front facing, you mean public facing. Public facing, yeah. public facing. And then obviously if we're out of corner, then we have some other issues. Yeah. Um, and, um, but I, I, you know, an all brick building makes no sense. For that, uh, I eat a preponderance of brick or or something expensive like that it makes no sense because I still want people to come in. We're trying to find that happy medium in my mind. Mm -hmm. So the square footage of the building somewhat determines that. Mm -hmm. Like display pack, I don't think they putting brick around that whole thing. <laughs> right. It's yeah. So expensive. It's a, it's a little skirt around a giant yeah. building. Um, but at the same time, I can give display pack credit for what they added on later they did an amazing job of beautifying their entrance that's um, at south end yeah 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 which was so I and mean, it shows us kind of like in one building both of what we're looking for or what we're looking for and what we're not looking for all in one building mm -hmm. well so i guess at this point all all i was looking for was is there anything you desperately opposed to um, and if you know, I, I'm, I'm getting a general feeling from you. And what I'll do is I'll put together a more, you know, uh, more put together ordinance for you guys to review as a you know, final ordinance. Okay, and then we'll go look at those buildings. And I would recommend you go to uh, Jade Farms and/or Display Pack or whatever and take a look at these buildings. Sure. And I will try to email you after this meeting with the uh, mass language and pictures that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Not that you would actually want to do this because it would be prohibitively expensive, but it was actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then, I guess the next thing on the agenda, look at this, we might be out by nine. Um, so if we can do this in less than 40 minutes. Jesus. So, uh, yes, Mr. Hall says, I told you I was going to be up north this week. I can hear the I can hear you being chastised from here. And Mr. Merlington says I had an emergency water service call. Um, I'm upset. I spent a lot of the weekend going over the packet and I was very ready. So um we should probably excuse um, both, both of those members if you would if 
if you're welcome. No, I can't speak tonight. Would you entertain a motion? I need more. I need more <laughs> caffeine. So yeah, I'll entertain a motion on that from someone who can speak. Motion to approve uh, Ryan Film and Aaron Mr. Hall. Thank you, Dean. I'll second that. Anyone want to fight against that? Okay. All in favor, excuse me, Mr. Burlington, Mr. Hall, please signify with aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. So now we don't have to <laughs> fix it next meeting. Okay, so uh, items not on the agenda. We have some correspondence um, that I see here. There was a the 2021 yearly meeting notice. Is that, is that just an update with the Zoom? Okay. Um, right okay. Oh, okay. That's, that's a good update for you then is uh, the city council decided to maintain Zoom for members of the public who might want to attend. Uh, board members are currently required to attend in person unless they have a health reason for not attending. Uh, I'm not going to ask you what that health reason is. You just have to declare that you have one. And if the Delta variant, uh, who knows where we'll be in a couple of weeks. As long as we have that, uh, I was going to bring this up later, but the, the subject's been broached. So uh, the Kent County Health Department has now moved us into the substantial um, likelihood of transmission. And based upon that, I know several employers are deciding to mandate masks. Yeah. Yeah. Where are we as a city on that? And are we tied in any way to the decisions of what the the health department. Um, so I only got that information today, and fortunately, I was too busy to really deal with it. Um, I think everybody is going to acknowledge that once you, you know, let that uh, bell be rung, it's hard to unring. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't think I'll be requiring staff at least at this point <laughs> to mask up. Um, of course, I encourage it, especially if you have not been vaccinated. Um, but it's going to be a touch and go type of thing with staff. Now, this board can decide otherwise if they want to act separately um, and uh, recommend or require based on a motion to require masks. Um, of course, social distancing, probably not the worst thing in the world. And we can further social distance in the future if you'd like. Um, or we could uh, go to the library and use fire stations. I don't know. We might have a little bit more room. We'd obviously have to know with a little bit of time so we can schedule some things. Right. But for right now, I guess I recommend you get your vaccine and wear a mask or get a mask. So that's, I actually came tonight with one because I wasn't sure when I saw there was very few people in here and I'm personally vaccinated, I decided not to, but I can see where by this next meeting, we may be in a completely different landscape the way things are going. So I just wanted to get kind of a feel for, yeah. uh, as far as public meetings, how we're addressing this. I know downtown Grand Rapids, most places are requiring masks now. My office mm -hmm. just went there today. My office just went there. others are doing that too, when I visited. Okay. Um, the next thing, uh, there was a initial review policy. Is that the <coughs> correspondence oh, on yeah. that? So, I mean, I've already adopted this. Okay. Um, I think it's a slide from this previous meeting. Mm -hmm. But just wanted you guys to have it. And of course, it's very, very detailed for what's really happening. Uh, but these applicants who are here tonight, they presented a very high quality mm -hmm. proposal, yeah. uh, which of course is always ironic after you just get done adopting policy for very bad proposals. Um, I'm not mad. I'm sure we'll have more opportunities. <laughs> um, and of course, the other fun thing <coughs> we have a marijuana business which bought out another marijuana business. Mm -hmm. So you're going to be at your next meeting reviewing a site plan that you've already previously approved of. Um, and they, they did make some very minor changes, but it were minor changes, I think, to the interior of the plan. So the exterior is essentially the same of what you've already approved. So, um, yeah. But uh, this is what we'll be doing in the future to the best of our ability. Okay. Questions. And all the applicants come to you first now, right? Before they even make it to us. So, yeah, I mean, first of all, you can't get to the planning commission without going to the city. Um, but 
in all the materials it says we strongly recommend you sit down with your city manager first right which these folks did and that's why at least partially why they had such a good high quality uh, site plan okay so, i mean you know this, this is what i do for a living and i'm the one who wrote most of these rules so. the last meeting you discussed that about letting you take over that or something and have you be the first person that looks at this so that way we're not going you know, come back again and come back, you know. Yeah, that's what we're talking about with the initial review process. Okay. Okay, um, which puts it right back. The next thing on the agenda is the staff comment, city manager. Um, I did have a few extra minutes to put together a project update. Hopefully you guys found that to be enlightening. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this stuff kind of gets stalled with super little stuff going on and that's why you don't see it built out. Uh, you know, all the hard work that you guys have put in will eventually come to fruition. Okay. Uh, staff comments, uh, city clerk, do you have any comments for us? No, but thank you for your patience tonight. I appreciate the podcast. <laughs> thank you, thank you for, for, for saving the day and coming in and helping us here. Um, uh, Planning Commission members, anything from you? Like to add? Okay. Uh, City Council representative, I don't see one here tonight. Uh, unless, unless we bring Ms. Race into it. Uh, Ms. Race, unfortunately, you are the only City Council person who is currently <laughs> present. Do you have a City Council person comment? Well, as I take a bite of my pizza, sorry. Um, no, I think it was a nice meeting tonight. I don't have much going, much to say. Actually, I was not prepared for it, but. Um, it's nice to see everyone's face, that's for sure. Not even sure There's me. There's the camera on us over there. Oh, okay. there I know, right? <laughs> but I don't have anything prepared, so I don't have anything for you tonight. But it was a good meeting. Enjoy an early night out of the meeting. And it's good to see you guys. Thank you. Good to see you as well. Um, the Board of Land Consultant. I would just bring up a process comment and you can do with it what you want, but uh, your agenda is always set up so that you have public hearings and then you go through old business and then you get into new business, which is the same project as the pub public hearing item. And maybe you've discussed this before and I'm not aware of it, but you could follow the same procedure that you did tonight is you hold the public hearing and then you immediately go into discussion and make a decision on that project. That you know, you, you're allowed to do that. Your bylaws just say scheduled public hearings, and then you go into old business. But a public hearing, and I and I kind of base this on experience in other communities where if, if you do the, if you have the public hearing, and then you sit there and, and you have a number of a lot of old business, and there's 30 people in the audience that came for the public hearing, they want to hear what you have to say. They have to sit through all your old business, mm -hmm. which could last a fair amount of time before they get to the reason they came to the meeting in the first place. And so I'll just throw that out that you may wanna consider amending your process to immediately go to the uh, discussion stage and decision stage right after the public hearing and then go to old business. Okay. Just so, something to throw up. So would this be only for projects who are having a public hearing? Right, public hearings are always first on the agenda because people come there and they, you get, get to them first. And so you you dispense with that before you go into anything else on the agenda. Okay. Without having the, the, the bylaws in front of me, do we have to change the bylaws to make that happen? Or do we just have to change how the agenda is put together? interpret it that way. Yeah, it just says scheduled public hearings, <laughs> and then old business, then new business. So public hearings, you have a public hearing and you, you dispense with it. You take public comment, discuss it, make a decision. And that decision may be to table it or approve it or deny it, but at least you get that done for the benefit of the people and the applicant that has paid their fare and come here to see it. So mm -hmm. it's a, we're charging for door. <laughs> you could. <laughs> I, I think, I'm I think the applicant has paid to, to have it. Heard, I think so. the idea is that new business would be site plans that don't require a public hearing. Correct. Whereas a public hearing now becomes its kind of own little, you know, uh, Site plan slash special land use mm. 
So we do them at the same time. <laughs> right. I'm not opposed to it, but it's something that I think the board needs to interpret if that's what they want. I would I would like to do it that way. I'm always as a as the person interpreting the agenda here and trying to move it forward. It's always difficult for me to know, or um, short of where I've just been started straight out amending the agenda the last two meetings. It's hard for me to know procedurally that I'm doing the right thing if I don't have consensus from the city manager and the city and from the, all of you that that's what we want to do. Another possible option is we remove the non-site plan materials to a later time in the agenda. So you have you know, uh, public hearings, you have uh, old site plans, you have new site plans, and then you have non-site plans, ordinance reviews, you know, stuff like that. That way, you know, we're not putting old, or I'm sorry, new site plans behind old ordinance reviews. Right. I think we've had the opposite issue before, which is where we have had pending things that were waiting for us, but we were jumping and putting new things in front yeah, of us. Yeah, I was just going to say, I think the issue, I'm pretty sure last time we did it also, where we switched the new business with the old business, because that's already old. Yeah, it's, <laughs> so like it's, having it's it wait a like an hour and a half or something is... It's a quirk of how the wasn't. agenda and the, you know, the bylaws have set up your thing, and we're not supposed to change it. Yeah, so the way you just suggested, I'm very happy. That, that's what I would like to do is to move these type of items to the end. Okay. The things that we did at the end tonight mm -hmm. belong in the end. When when people or most, if a if a if a person in the community wants to stay through that, obviously they can. But most people don't want to watch that. Mr. Johnson, does that just say that we have to do those th those three things? It doesn't say the order that we have to do them. Well, you have to follow your bylaws. So if you're going to switch it around, you should change your bylaws. So you okay. I don't know if it was saying that we had to have those three items on our agenda. And it didn't really matter. <laughs> They're just worded in there that way. Well, well, the nice thing about the bylaws is you can change them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I just wasn't sure the wording not saying it, obviously. Yeah. yeah, you can do that. You can have, like I say, public hearings. And then old business often is something you tabled, which may be tabled from the public hearing. So then you have to say, well, that's old business. We take that up first at the yeah. next meeting because there will be people that want to come back and follow that through. Are those bylaws changes subject to city council approval? Or are we at liberty to change them? I don't think so. No. What we would do is we'd present those changes at the next meeting. Right. I think it went a lot smoother tonight. I, I think it did. I think it also lumps them together. So we're not talking about like they have a comment and then an hour later I'm coming back to like remembering what they said about the thing or anything. I mean, it's probably, and to the clerk's point, it's probably best practice to present changes like that to the council, but probably as a consent item, we should probably not hear anything back on it. Right. So <laughs> you can, you, if you could do what's necessary so that we can change those bylaws and if we don't have the official approval we'll just change the amendment at the next agenda as needed until we get everything in line the way it has to be okay. but i believe that you're, you're that you're on the right track that we should not have these large gaps in between two portions of the same issue mm -hmm. okay. we will make some always modifications yes yeah. <laughs> so no rush i'll just keep changing these in every time just whenever you get to it it's fine okay um so where's that leave us uh adjourn i think it's time to adjourn so do that <laughs> it's 8 33 <laughs> 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 yeah i did like the way you did that tonight